first thought that's going through my mind is that I'm, I'm about to die. I was screaming and just terrified. The shark is, I think, terrifying. Most people, if they were in the water, had to face an attack by a great white shark. Uh, can't even imagine that kind of fear. They're a wild animal and they're, they're in their habitat. So you really have to have an awareness always that you're in the wild. I've grown up in this area my whole life. And also I've been a swimmer since I was six years old. And past three years, I have been swimming out in these waters extensively. Uh, I actually trained in these waters to swim the Catalina Channel, which for my swim was a 24 mile swim. I spent about eight months training and all the training was done up and down the beach right here. And that's, that's what I did for my 50th birthday. July 5th was the day of my shark attack, but the night before, I was out celebrating 4th of July with a lot of my friends. <laughs> had I just had just one more beer that night celebrating with my friends, I would have been too tired to get up in the morning to get out and go swimming with my ocean group. Every Saturday morning, we meet right here at this beach, and we swim out to the end of this pier, swim out and around, and we head over to Manhattan Pier. It's about a two mile swim. It takes about an hour to get from pier to pier. And I was almost down at the end of that swim. And about 12 feet underneath me, I see this shark. And within two seconds, it surfaces right up in front of me. And I was like, oh my God, this thing's too close. And right as I thought that, it came in and it bit me right on my torso here. People have this idea as white sharks being these mindless killers that are out stalking people. And that simply isn't true. And the more we learn about white shark behavior, the better we understand that they're like any other animal in the ocean, right? They have to eat, but their prey tend to be large. The real challenge is we don't really know why sharks occasionally bite people. However, we can break those down into two simple categories. Sharks either bite people for predation reasons. In other words, they're intent on feeding. They either think of humans as food or they mistake humans as food. And in most cases, we think sharks might bite people because of mistaken identity. So in other words, a person is at the surface in a wetsuit kind of looks like a seal or a sea lion. In some cases, those people are simply bitten, but they're able to swim all the way back to shore. The shark doesn't finish them off. The problem is, if it's made of protein and, it, and it's perfectly edible, why wouldn't a starving shark eat a person, even if they mistake them as prey? Another possibility is for defensive reasons. If they feel threatened, they will protect themselves. So in some cases, it's possible that a swimmer or a surfer is getting close to a shark. A shark saying, you're too close, you're in my space, back off. The person doesn't even see the shark there. The shark rushes over, takes a bite, the person leaves, and, and the problem is solved for the shark. It held on to me for about five seconds. As it's grabbing in on me, we're staring at each other eye to eye as it's gnawing in on me. I can feel the whole length of this shark as it's digging in on me. It's very terrifying. I'm thinking it's my very last moments. And you really don't have time to be scared. You have to fight for your life. There's, there's nothing else you can do. The one thing we always tell people is if you see a shark, quite often that's a good thing. Um, you know, kind of keep your eye on the shark and as the shark swims by, just kind of watch it. If the shark knows you're watching it, part of the gig is up and quite often they'll just move along. If the shark starts coming back and repeatedly coming back and coming closer and closer, they're telling you it's time to get out of the water. Always keep your eyes on the shark if you can. And slowly, not crazily, move your way out of the water if you can. If a shark actually bites you, we recommend that you hit it as hard as you can in the snout or in the eyes, because those tend to be very sensitive parts of the body, and quite often the shark will release the person. The shark released itself, and I was able to take a few strokes behind me, and my first friend was right there. I jumped on top of him in a big panic, and I told him I got bit by a shark, and I was screaming and just terrified. I got you, I got you, come on. 
with this hand, I'm holding on to my, my cut, my lacerations that are right here. And I was just looking straight up because I was so scared to look down. And as all that's happening, they said they see the sharks circling around us. By the time I got to shore, all the lifeguard paramedics, a whole crowd of people were there. And it just happened so quick. When I grabbed the nose of the shark, apparently I grabbed its tooth. This hit the artery, and this thing was just bleeding nonstop for about three hours. They were doing direct pressure, and it took about three hours before this uh, bleeding would stop. I had 11 stitches right in here, and they left them kind of open so that it would continue to bleed out throughout the week, because apparently it's a dirty bite, so they want all the bacteria to be able to flush out. On my thumb here, I had about seven stitches, and I lost my sensation in here for about a month. I was always terrified of great white sharks, so I've spent time in the water face to face with those creatures, cage diving with conservationists. But being in the water with them, seeing them in their habitat, being within their habitat, and they don't look like these big monstrous creatures with the teeth coming after the meat. They're just swimming around and they're beautiful and they're peaceful and they're serene and they were playing. We're still seeing a lot of shark activity in Southern California. And this is where a bulk of the people use the ocean year round. So this is something that I think we have to all start to expect as our coastal ocean gets healthier and shark populations come back. I hear about shark attacks and wonder why I'm so blessed. I have my arms and legs. For the most part, everything about me is normal. And others weren't as lucky as me. Some don't make it out. We have to learn to share the waves with sharks. So while The Shallows is a movie and it's kind of playing off that idea of, of sharks as an important predator in the ocean and occasionally biting people, I think it's really important that people remember that most of the time the sharks are out there minding their own business, doing what sharks do. We're a visitor to the ocean and we have to learn to share the waves.